Greetings, traveler, to the enchanting realm of Eversong Woods. Journey alongside me through these sloping emerald hills and glistening rivers, for I am the law master of this realm, entrusted with unveiling its cherished lore and revealing the mysteries that enshroud this enchanting kingdom. Located within the vast continent of Azeroth is Eversong Woods, a realm steeped in mystique and enchantment. Within its borders lies the ancestral abode of the Blood Elves, descendants of the High Elves, a race renowned for their noble demeanor and profound mastery of magic, harmonizing with the very essence of nature. Long ago, when the sun kissed the treetops and shadows danced beneath the canopy, a grand forest known as Eversong Forest stretched its boughs far and wide, encompassing both Eversong Woods and the adjacent Ghostlands. Within this ancient expanse, a great battle unfolded between the Amani trolls that reigned over the territory and the Highborn, a group of night elves wielding incredible magical powers. Sought to claim the forests for themselves, they engaged in a fierce conflict with the Amani populace, eventually emerging victorious and establishing their own kingdom. The High Elves renamed the forest as Eversong Woods and founded the glorious kingdom of Quel'Thalas. The High Elves flourished, creating magnificent cities and blending their arcane knowledge with the natural beauty of the woods. At the heart of their empire, the capital city of Silvermoon was established near the northern tip of Eversong Woods, overlooking the ocean. Over the course of history, Eversong Woods faced numerous challenges and conflicts. The forest trolls, known as the Amani, remained relentless adversaries of the High Elves, engaging in frequent battles for dominance. During the Third War, Prince Arthas and the Scourge, driven by their desire to possess the Elves' magical Sunwell, inflicted significant devastation upon the heart of Quel'Thalas. As a result, Eversong Woods bears a tainted scar, serving as a reminder of the destructive impact of the Scourge's invasion. Today, Eversong Woods remains a symbol of elven resilience and beauty that has withstood time for over 7,000 years. With its enchanting scenery, warm-hearted inhabitants, and welcoming ambience, it presents an idyllic starting point for your grand expedition. So come, traverse the winding trails of the forest, embrace the charm of its tranquil hamlets, and unravel the mysteries that lie within this timeless realm. Eversong Woods is a place of perpetual autumn, where the beauty of nature surrounds adventurers and travelers alike. Nestled within the magical kingdom of Quel'Thalas, its beautiful landscapes and ethereal atmosphere create a haven for adventurers seeking tranquility and mystery. The woods are adorned with lush foliage, shimmering waters, and majestic trees that stretch towards the heavens. Surrounded by the great seas in the northern part of the eastern kingdoms, there are few lands as recognizable as Eversong Woods. Inexperienced adventurers start their journey on Sunstrider Isle, just northwest of Silvermoon City. There they will slowly uncover the veil of this wondrous land. Deep within the forests, captivating landmarks and sites of significance dot the landscape. The grandeur of Silvermoon City with its elegant spires stands as a testament to the elven civilization overlooking the woods with grace. And to the south, the guarded grounds of Fairbreeze Village serve as a sanctuary for the newly enlisted elven adventurers. While Eversong Woods exudes a serene ambience, it is not without perils. Sinister forces lurk amidst the shadows, threatening the unwary traveler. The area is inhabited by various hostile creatures such as trolls, undead, and rogue mana worms. And along the road leading to the rugged lands of Ghostlands lies the ominous Dead Scar. Let those foreboding signs act as a warning that the golden-leaved forest paths are not without danger. The radiant realm of Eversong Woods is home to the Blood Elves and is intricately connected to several other zones within Azeroth. These connections offer a glimpse into the wider world and the stories that unfold beyond the tranquil borders of Eversong Woods. Eversong Woods is connected to Silvermoon City and the ruins of Silvermoon, the capital of the Blood Elves. The city lies just to the north of the forest and serves as the heart of their civilization. Silvermoon City is a majestic place with elegant structures and magical architecture. The connection between Eversong Woods and Silvermoon City is strong, 
as many quests and storylines in the woodlands lead adventurers and travelers to the capital. To the south lies the Ghostlands, a once thriving elven land now plagued by the scars of the Scourge invasion. The Ghostlands serves as a stark example of the devastating impact of Prince Arthas and the Scourge on the High Elven Kingdom of Quel'Thalas during the Third War. Adventurers venturing into the Ghostlands will witness the aftermath of this tragedy and aid the remaining Blood Elves in reclaiming their lands from the undead. Finally, to the north, the flight paths take allies of the Blood Elves to the shores of the Isle of Queldanus, also known as Sunwell Isle in the common tongue. It is here that the Sunwell was created, a mystical fount of unimaginable power. The well's arcane magic strengthened all of the High Elves on Azeroth. After the tainting of the Sunwell's magic by Arthas, it no longer serves as a source of power for the remaining Blood Elves. The Dead Scar is a haunting site of destruction that traces its path through the once vibrant land of Quel'Thalas. It bears witness to the invasion led by the Death Knight Arthas Menethil during the Third War. Arthas and his Scourge forces cut a swath of devastation, sparing none as they marched relentlessly towards the Isle of Quel'Darnus. The Scar itself acts as a cruel divide, splitting Quel'Thalas in two, while Silvermoon City itself bears the marks of their merciless advance. Originating from Deathome, the Scourge's stronghold, the Scar winds through the Ghostlands and Eversong Woods, finally reaching the shattered gates of Silvermoon before continuing to the coast of the North Sea. On the Isle of Queldanas, it ends near the Sunwell, the once glorious source of the High Elves' magic. The scars of the past, etched deep into the land, would always serve as a testament to the indomitable spirit of Quel'Thalas and its people's determination to overcome the darkness that once engulfed them. Lake Elrendar, situated in southeastern Eversong Woods, is a notable location that spans into the Ghostlands, an adjacent zone. It is a picturesque body of water that serves as the source for the extensive Elrendar River which flows out of the lake, meandering through the surrounding lands. While Lake Elrendar exudes an aura of peaceful ambience, the southernmost part of the lake has a haunting past. Numerous individuals met their demise in those waters, and their lingering spirits now haunt the area. Wraiths from the past manifest as spectral beings, adding an eerie atmosphere to the southern reaches of the lake. In response to this supernatural threat, the Fast Riders, the elite rangers of Quel'Thalas, are actively engaged in combating the undead presence. They welcome the assistance of brave adventurers who are willing to aid them in hunting down and eliminating these wraiths. The Fast Riders recognize the importance of maintaining the sanctity of Lake Elrendar and the surrounding lands. The ruins of Silvermoon encompass the western half of Silvermoon City, the capital city of the Blood Elves and the former kingdom of Quel'Thalas. These ruins are a stark contrast to the reconstructed eastern districts of Silvermoon City, separated by the ominous Dead Scar. Within the ruins of Silvermoon, the only area that remains populated is Falconwing Square. This location acts as an intermediary point for new Blood Elf explorers, serving as a hub between Sunstrider Isle and Silvermoon City. Falconwing Square provides essential amenities such as an inn and trainers for professions and classes. There is speculation regarding the nature of the ruins of Silvermoon. Some suggest that this area may have once been the residential district of Silvermoon City before the Scourge's invasion. The presence of house-like buildings and the haunting wretched inhabitants, along with blood elves like Rathine wandering the streets, supports this notion. Shepherd's Gate, also known as the Magister's Gate, serves as the primary entry point from Eversong Woods into the realm of Silvermoon City. However, it is interesting to note that the Shepherd's Gate was not originally the city's entrance. Remnants of the original entry can still be seen along the path of the haunting Dead Scar, and a sealed gate in the bazaar prevents access to that area, rendering it inaccessible. The gate acquired its current name as a tribute to Prince Kael'thas Sunstrider, who courageously ventured into the ravaged city following the devastating Scourge invasion. It was after this event that the gate came to be associated with the name Shepherd's Gate, 
symbolizing Prince Kalthas's guiding presence in the resurgence of Quelthalas. Two significant forest troll areas known as Torwatha and Zebwatha hold their distinct presence in the forests of Eversong. Torwatha, one of the two forest troll areas, stands as a vast expanse that surpasses the neighboring Zebwatha in size. At the pinnacle of its eastern ridge, remnants of a colossal fortress once graced the landscape, featuring massive gates that guarded its entrance. Curiously, the fortress stood abandoned, devoid of any inhabitants, while the forest trolls resided in camps scattered below, adding an air of mystery to this formidable location. On the other hand, Zebwatha, though comparatively smaller than Torwatha, carries its own significance. It serves as the dwelling place of Zebwatha's chieftain, a figure of considerable authority among the forest trolls. Within the confines of Zebwatha, the chieftain orchestrates their tribe's activities, plotting against the Blood Elves and shaping the course of their presence in Eversong Woods. Located at the Fastrider Retreat is the Lieutenant Blood Elf Dawnrunner. She is responsible for dispatching brave adventurers on their missions to counter the threats posed by the forest trolls in the region. Her duties involve maintaining the defense and security of the Blood Elf lands. Lieutenant Dawnrunner stands as a shining example of elven elegance and strength in the midst of hidden perils and mysterious rumors. Her understanding of the land is unparalleled and she remains ever watchful in her duty. She skillfully traverses the trails that wind through the enchanting Eversong woods, carefully charting strategic points and reinforcing vital areas to safeguard the domain of the Blood Elves. In the Sanctuary of Fastrider Retreat, Lieutenant Dawnrunner symbolizes the unyielding spirit of the Blood Elves, a beacon of resilience and strength. Her unwavering commitment to duty and her people ensures that the mystical Eversong Woods remain a bastion of elven tranquility, impervious to the encroaching darkness that seeks to disrupt their harmony. Near the Scorched Grove wanders Old Whitebark, the revered elder and leader of the Trents in the Eversong Woods. In times long past, he had formed a remarkable alliance with the Blood Elves, assisting them in their endeavors and helping to rebuild a village it was during one fateful encounter near a mystical runestone that Whitebark first crossed paths with Lariana Riverwind, a kind-hearted blood elf who bestowed upon him a pendant as a token of gratitude. However, as the ghostlands to the south became plagued by dark and relentless threats, the blood elves faced a dire choice. To prevent the invasion of the Scourge, they made the heartbreaking decision to burn the forest. This drastic measure inadvertently led to the Trents turning against their former allies. The pain of this betrayal ran deep within Old Whitebark's ancient heart. Ultimately, Blood Elf adventurers were tasked with bringing an end to the Trent Elder's suffering. In his final moments, the Trent Elder accepted his ultimate fate. Lariana, who had never intended for such a tragedy to unfold, sends the adventurers on a solemn mission to bury the pendant near the very runestone where their paths had first intertwined, hoping to bring peace to old Whitebark's tormented spirit. And so, as the pendant found its resting place, the disturbed spirit of Whitebark was finally able to find solace and let go of the pain that had consumed him for so long. Philendron was once a promising student, However, his insatiable thirst for magical power consumed him when he ignored the warnings and teachings of his elders. As a result, he was banished from his homeland, deemed unworthy to be a part of the Blood Elf society. Now an outcast known as a wretched, Philendron roams the desolate lands, haunted by his own addiction. His existence has been reduced to a mere shadow of his former self. Instead of seeking control and balance in his magical abilities, he succumbs to the temptations of his insatiable desires, plunging deeper and deeper into madness. With the weight of his mistakes upon him, Philendron seeks solace atop Falthrian Academy, where his journey began. The once hallowed halls now serve as a reminder of his downfall. Surrounded by arcane elementals, he clings to the remnants of his powers, using them to fuel his relentless pursuit of magical addiction. Prospector Anvil Ward, a resilient dwarf, resides within the hallowed halls of the North Sanctum in Eversong Woods. Initially, his demeanor towards Horde adventurers is peaceful.
However, when his true purpose is unveiled, Anvil Ward's disposition transforms, and he becomes an adversary to those of the Horde. While on his covert mission, Prospector Anvil Ward skillfully observed the intricate workings of the Blood Elves in Quel'Thalas. His noble aim was to lend aid to the valiant Sentinel spies, facilitating the sabotage of the Blood Elves' formidable installations. Anvil Ward appears to have connections with the mighty city of Ironforge, signifying his allegiance to the Dwarven realm. Elden Sunbrand, a commanding figure in Falconwing Square, sends new adventurers on their first task to recover stolen unstable mana crystals before they cause a disastrous explosion. Simultaneously, Silvermoon City offered a reward for the notorious wretched leader, Thyalis the Hungerer. The objective was to bring his head to Sergeant Canron and ensure justice for the fallen guards. Only the bravest adventurers accepted the challenge, understanding the gravity of the situation. Further complications arose when rumors of Darnassian involvement in the malfunction of the West Sanctum surfaced. The adventurers are dispatched to investigate the site, eliminate any intruders, and report their findings to Laykeeper Valania. Additionally, the discovery of incriminating documents leads the adventurers to Aelden Sunbrand, who unveils the treachery orchestrated by a Darnassian spy. With delicate discretion, the adventurers are tasked with eliminating the spy, Prospector Anvilwood. They are to bring back the dwarf's head as proof, leaving no room for doubt. Near Zebwatha, courageous adventurers discover the Amani invasion plans. The task at hand is clear. Journey through Eversong Woods to reach Fair Breeze Village and seek out Ranger Degolian. The urgent message must be conveyed, for even with Chieftain Zulmarosh's demise, the looming threat of a troll attack demands preparedness. Assured, Degolian dispatched reinforcements swiftly. The gravity of the information delivered is recognized, and Fair Breeze Village stands prepared, vigilant and alert. Legends whispered among the elven inhabitants suggest that Murgul may be linked to a notorious act of thievery. Tales tell of stolen cargo vanishing from Captain Calisandra's ship, and murmurs point towards the mischievous Murloc chieftain as the likely culprit. To uncover the truth, intrepid adventurers are advised to turn their gaze toward the Golden Strand. It is upon these sun-kissed shores that Murgul and his tribe establish their camps, a scattered collection that stretches along the shoreline. Seekers of the Murloc Chieftain need only keep a watchful eye, for his unique appearance sets him apart from his fellow Murlocs. Adorned with distinct colors that distinguish him from the rest, Murgul can be readily recognized amidst the lively Murloc encampments that dot the Golden Strand. But tread cautiously, for engaging with the wily Chieftain is sure to unveil a treacherous battle of tooth and scale where the primal fury of the Grimscale tribe is unleashed with merciless intent. And so, dear travelers and wanderers, our stay in the enchanting realm of Eversong Woods draws to a conclusion. We have traversed its shimmering glades, witnessed the dance of sunlight through its golden leaves, and embraced the harmonious essence that fills every inch. As the Lawmaster of Eversong Woods, I stand humbled by the privilege of accompanying you on this journey. May the tales you have discovered and the secrets you have unraveled ignite a perpetual flame of curiosity and wonder within your heart. Remember, within the depths of every forest lies a tapestry of untold lore, patiently awaiting the touch of those who dare to uncover it. As you bid farewell to this realm of mystique, I bid farewell to you, dear traveller. May your future endeavors be filled with wonder and success, and should your path ever lead you back to Eversong Woods, know that its ancient grounds and golden leaves shall embrace you with open arms. <laughs>